Okay, I'm good to go. Tell me about this conference. What's going on? Well, what we've done today is try to work with ANGA and uh, the other state agencies to put together a program that will really move to the, the next level down. Virtually everybody that's here today understands the value of what CNG or natural gas vehicles can mean going forward. This is more of a mechanical conversation about how do we get from where we are down into the weeds about how do we move from here to building the infrastructure, having greater accessibility to vehicles, and what will those vehicles be? What will the transitional period look like? And, and really what we're hearing from the panelists is consistent with what we've heard over the last year as we've done our homework on this, and that's the heavy vehicles down to the lighter residential passenger sedans at the very end are really the way this looks like it will develop going forward. But this is more of a working conference to try and identify and address some of those issues and then figure out what policy steps may be needed to go forward. Where is the state right now on natural gas vehicles and usage? Well, I think the governor's very, uh, already identified he's very supportive of CNG as a uh, transportation fuel going forward. I know that DAS, uh, the Department of Administrative Services, has already started to look at where it makes sense in the fleet uh, and, frankly, where it doesn't because we think it's very important for us to make sure that a business case can be made for for what vehicles should be either when they're replaced with CNG vehicles or if there's even a need to upfit any of the existing fleet. Uh, and so I think we're working on identifying the areas where it makes good economic sense. And, and I think you heard some of the panelists this morning talk about where it can make a good business case. And we want to do that as opposed to a carte blanche replace every vehicle because in, in many cases it just doesn't make economic sense today where it may further down the road. What's PUCO's role in all of that? Uh, that's just a great question. We don't have a, a great amount of jurisdictional authority. In fact, our, we're only really related as it deals with perhaps the LDCs who may move the gas uh, from where it is to where the stations may be at an adequate pressure so we can minimize the amount of compressors that need to be installed and hopefully reduce the cost of the stations as they're put into place. But this is one of those tasks that the governor said, you know, we need somebody to take the lead on it. And he looked at me and said, you want to take this? And I said, I'd be delighted. So here we are a little over a year later, and this came directly out of the governor. Energy Summit last September uh, and is the next steps down the road to try to figure out what state policy should be, how we can make sure that it works, and that it's really cost effective for taxpayers. Now, why, what's the bottom line? Why do this? Why is, why is natural gas an option we should be looking at? Well, I think that's, that's a great question. I think there's three reasons. One, it's the gas is here. We have it in Ohio uh, between the Utica and the Marcellus next door. There's a substantial amount of gas, as you heard this morning, about what's available. Two, this is a great resource that allows us to, you know, impact the environment. Mobile source is a greater source of pollution than the fixed source is. And so if we can minimize the environmental impacts and still maintain our infrastructure with regard to transportation, I think that's a great outcome as well. And, and thirdly, this can be in Ohio, by Ohio, for Ohio. It's Ohioans that are going to be working in the fields, getting the gas out of the ground. It's folks that are building the cars and working in the automotive industry already. And it's folks that are buying those vehicles and using them across the state and across the region. Okay.